Everybody be cool, it's just a normal day of dollar bin diving at a local comic shop. Check it out. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Chris and this is North Garden Comics. You know, most weekends I try to get out and go on a comic book adventure and that's when I'm looking for good books at really great prices. And I'll do that a few different ways. My wife and I will frequent garage sales when they're in season. I'll also keep my eye out for different back issue sales at local stores or I'll go to the half price books, which there are like six of them in my area. I'll also be on the lookout for shows or conventions that come into town. You get the idea. In addition to that, I live in an area where there are several, dare I say, many different places that I can go looking for back issues on any given weekend. And so I can't possibly hit them all every weekend. And what I try to do then is think about where haven't I been recently and then try to make a circuit maybe once a month or so to try to hit a place up so that I stay on top of what new back issues they may have added to their uh, inventory. This particular weekend, my adventures took me to a store called Issues Needed Comics, located in Apple Valley, Minnesota. For a little geographic reference, that's located 10-15 minutes due south of the Mall of America. The store has been in business for a few years now. When they first opened, they only carried new comics. But over time, they've expanded their inventory, and now they have a decent back issue section as well. And they'll have one section that are like sets or runs of books. Then there's your main traditional back issue section where everything is bagged and boarded and priced as marked. But then they have, I would say it's got to be 15 or 20 long boxes of 99 cent bins. And these are fantastic. I can go in and literally sit on the floor, pull a long box toward me, and go through comic by comic. It's not alphabetized, but that just adds to the excitement because you don't know what the next book is going to be. And it's also a complete mixed bag. You'll find recent back issues, things that maybe were overstocked and they didn't sell enough of, but then there's also plenty of mid-grade Bronze Age books in there as well. So there's always something fun to find and add to my personal collection. Today, I've got some back issues to show you, but then I also picked up a couple new books from them I'd like to share as well, and then stick around till the end. I've got a couple other recent acquisitions from a different store I'd love to share with you. Now, let's shift some things around behind me and take a closer look at the books. All right, first up is a few issues from a series I was not really specifically looking for. I've recently added them to my wish list. Here we have Marvel Fanfare. This is a 60 issue series that ran from 1982 to 1991. Marvel put it out once every other month and it's an anthology series highlighting different top talent from the time, but then also up and coming new talent. It had a double the normal cover price. So instead of 60 cents in 1982, these were $1.25. And that got you a couple things. It, one, these were printed on high quality, shiny magazine paper, but it also meant no ads. So you have cover to cover story throughout. And another cool thing is that at least the ones that I got today have wraparound covers which is kind of cool. I was not looking for this, but I've seen people do videos where they picked up like number one or different issues in the run. And when I can find them for a dollar, things like this from the 80s, very cool. So decided what the heck, I'll just start adding these. And he had a few more in the store in between like number 30 and 40. I didn't get them because I don't usually like to just randomly pick up issues, but when they're in good condition like this, I'll usually make an exception. And honestly, if I go back in a couple weeks and they're still there, I'll probably get the others. But in addition to number four, I got number 13. There's a wrap around cover there as well. Number 33. The X Men on the cover. And then number 38, which is a cool Moon Knight cover. You see the art credit here. Hunt is the artist, and Sienkiewicz is, is mentioned here as well. I think Sienkiewicz did the inks on this. And then you got Rogue and Dazzler on the back. So those are cool. Like I said, 60 issue run, and I got what, like four, four issues towards that. So that'll be fun to slowly put together over the years. Next up was a really cool find. This is Steampunk number five. I am a big fan of Chris Bacalo's art, 
and I've been working on building out a collection of his interior artwork as well as cover artwork. And this is one that has been on my wish list for a little while now, so ever since I discovered that it was out there. 12 issue series that was supposed to go originally 24 issues, but it was cut short, done under images imprint of Cliffhanger Comics. And it's titled, you know, Steampunk. And it's a story that takes place in the genre of steampunk. So, you know, futuristic sci-fi mashed up with early 1900s type of a setting. But it's some of his earlier work I have wanted now to have the whole run. I would not normally start with number five, but again, it was only a dollar, and it's the first time I've ever seen this in the wild, so I was not gonna leave it behind. I'm not entirely convinced that there aren't one or two more issues in this run sitting in those long boxes at issues needed, so I'll probably be going back in the next few weeks and hunting a little extra close to see if I can find a couple more. We've got Ultimate Spider-Man number 98. I've read a chunk of this run through the Marvel Unlimited app, but I'm not actively collecting the series. This one I picked up, it's a minor key within the run. This is the first appearance of the Ultimate Spider-Woman. So I thought that was pretty cool. I say this a lot, I'm a big X-Men fan. I've never had this four part mini series uh, for Nightcrawler from the 80s, and this was the first time I picked one up. So number two, he had 99 cents, and this is, you know, this is the direct edition, but the, oh, there's a nice ad for Saturday morning cartoons, and the pages are in nice, nice condition, so I figured, what the heck, I'm going to get it eventually, why don't I just grab number two? The next couple come from a run, I'm not trying to put the whole thing together, but I definitely seem to be getting a growing number of issues from this volume. This is Spectacular Spider-Man. This is number 87. This is the issue where, as the cover shows, Peter Parker, or Spider-Man, reveals his identity as Peter Parker to Black Cat. And that's a newsstand copy, so minor key. Thought that was cool to add to my collection. And I also picked up number 131. Uh, this is part of the Craven's Last Hunt story. I think the last time I was in Issues Needed, I found number 132, which I think is the last part of the story, but it's a six part story. And it goes across, I think, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, and Web of Spider-Man. I now have, you know, two of those six issues. So fun to grab that. Back into the 21st century. Here we have Thor. This is number 605. Gosh, I think, I forget which volume of Thor this is. It might be Thor volume three at this point, but um, love the character. These are easy to piece together. By easy, I mean they're, they're pretty easy to find and they're not expensive when you do. And most of these runs with Thor and Mighty Thor have all started out with art by Olivier Coipel. I really like him as well. So I've been putting these volumes together slowly and I think this was the last issue in this volume that I needed. So fun to check that one off. And now I can read the whole thing. Here's a cool key. I am a Gen X kid of the 80s and 90s, and I liked the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a kid, but I was mostly into the cartoon, I played the video game, I was never into the comic. But this most recent iteration of the comic that IDW is doing has gotten some really good popularity, and I think well-deserved, and there's a few key issues in that. This issue here, number 59, is the death of Splinter. So for less than a dollar, that was a great Pick up. Some other fun books that I picked up just because. Here's Superman, number 100. I have a you know a few issues from this volume around the death of Superman, things like that. This one, full transparency, I bought this for the fun 90s metallic cover. Totally looks like steel on there. And it's in really good shape again. So in really good shape, cool cover. Less than a dollar, that's a, a no-brainer for me. Here's another Superman. This is Adventures of Superman, number 463. I think this is like the fifth race between Superman and The Flash. I have this one already, but I saw this one in the Key Collector Comics app, and you know it values like a high-grade copy at like $18. I don't have any plans to sell it, but... You see a book that's got some value and it's less than a dollar, it's fun to grab. 
nice white pages again it's in good shape so i figured what the heck i'll grab i'll grab a second copy all right and i've also mentioned in past videos what a fan of the transformers that i am that was what started me into collecting and into comics to begin with they've had a few different publishers that have held the ongoing you know license to do ongoing series and there's been a few of these mini series that have come out as well and i've I don't think I have any of the Devil's Due publishing miniseries with G.I. Joe versus the Transformers, but he had a handful of them today, so I figured let's add them to my Transformers collection. So we had, this is G.I. Joe versus the Transformers 2. This is number one, and you know they had cover A, cover B for a lot of these, and I think a handful of these are cover B. This is a four-part miniseries. They had part one, part two, part three and part four, so the whole thing, which is pretty cool to get those. And then they had one more, G.I. Joe versus the Transformers. This is one of two, 48 page comic, but just a, a two part mini series. So you had part one there, cool to add that one in. Then we go back to the 90s again. Here's a one issue from the Rogue mini series, four part mini series, this is number three. In previous videos I've shown where I've picked up like the Blink miniseries and the Bishop miniseries. And so several of the characters got miniseries at that time. I didn't collect any of them back in the 90s, but now it's fun to pull those together and add those to my X-Men collection. So that's the first issue I've had in that. And again, it wasn't bagged or boarded, but it's in really good shape. So it was well maintained despite not having a bag or a board. And then this next one, this is Issue 13 from this G.I. Joe Transformer series. I forget, honestly, how many issues were in this. Uh, I should have looked that up beforehand. And this is um, John Barber. Is it John Barber or James Barber? Here we go. Yeah. John Barber and Tom Scioli. Scioli. And a very distinct art style. And... This did very well. I was not particularly attracted to this when it first came out. But again, as a Transformers fan, and a lot of times new or different art styles, whereas they may not jump out at me at first, they'll grow on me over time. So this is one where I'm like, what the heck? I'll go ahead and try to piece this together and give that a read. And this was a great one to start with because it was $7.99 cover price and I got it for 75 cents. And then the last thing I got, well, not the last thing I got, but just, I'll just show you. Marvel Universe Free. This is just a magazine size preview magazine. And Marvel periodically will do these, and, and I grab them. You, you gotta get some magazine sized bag and board to stick them in, but they're, they're just fun to have. And years from now, I'll look back, similar to like, you know, Wizard Magazine and, and Marvel Age and those kind of things. Just fun to have and, and look back on these uh, down the road. That's it for back issues that I picked up. I did grab a couple new things that I'm gonna show you though. So with the, you know, 2020 and the whole world went sideways, we lost free comic book day, but you probably heard we're now in free comic book summer. And so there are gonna be kind of trickling out the releases of free comic books that would have all come out on the first Saturday of May. One of the ones that I had been looking forward to because of the creative team and just the concept looks cool is this one here, Firepower, done by Robert Kirkman and Chris Samney. You know, I, I like Samney's art style. Kirkman's obviously well-known and well-received, and uh, I've read some of his other things, though I didn't read The Walking Dead. I've been reading Oblivion Song, but this looked pretty cool, and to have a number one issue be the release on Free Comic Book Day, I, I also thought was cool. But in addition to that, I picked up this, this is the prelude to issue number one. It's not essential reading, but it's pretty cool backstory. And the number of pages you get here, there's no ads in this, but this is, I didn't count, this is over 100 pages. But um, this was only $9.99. So this was pretty cool to set the stage for the Firepower story. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to, to read that each month as that comes out. And that's all I picked up from Issues Needed, but wait, there's more. 
In a recent comic book adventure, not this day, but maybe a week prior, I headed to a store in the Minneapolis area called Dreamer's Vault. There's three or four locations in the Twin Cities area. They do like half the store is dedicated to Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, other kind of tabletop games, things like that. And they have a large section of the store with folding tables set up so they could do tournaments, competitions, things like that. But then they do have a, a, you know, a small comic book section and it's primarily new comics. The cool thing about Dreamer's Vault though is that as the issues become older, so maybe four, five, six months after it's come out, they will move those issues from the rack to their back issue bins and they just blanket, put everything at two bucks a piece that goes into their back issues. So that's a great way for me to go back and fill in runs or to you know, build out runs that I've become interested in and want, want to start to collect. So it's a great cheap way to be able to do that. And I'll go digging through there periodically. And sometimes you find some cool stuff. The last time I was in there, I picked up some more Gen X appealing type stuff. So here we have, this is TMNT Universe. I think this series has ended now, but I don't know. I love the cover and wanted to give it a try to read some of the current, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles things. You heard me mention before in that Death of Splinter that I'm not actively reading that, but this seemed like a great way just to, to jump in. And like I said, art looked cool and I liked the character, so I'd give it a go. But then there were a couple cool keys from uh, IDW's run that I grabbed as well. So again, for $2, here's another copy. And this one I got first. So this was my first copy, Death of Splinter for two bucks. So now I have two of those, but then they also had Number 51 for $2. This is the first appearance of Jenica, not as a turtle, but just as the character. And if that wasn't cool enough, they had two of those. So now I have two copies of first appearance of Jenica, two copies of uh, the uh, Death of Splinter. So some really fun things. Again, you never know what you're gonna find when you go diving in the discount bins. So yeah, just very happy with the the finds I came away with from these two days. All right, that's gonna do it for me, and that's gonna wrap up this dollar bin diving adventure at Issues Needed Comics. I hope you saw something that you liked. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like the dollar bin diving, then check out this video where I show you the books I picked up at a garage sale all for a dollar a piece. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.